Well, the mounting danger for journalists in Iraq is fast becoming a high-stakes tightrope. The recent brutal murders of American journalists Stephen Sotloff and James Foley proved that the threat is real. These two journalists, guilty of nothing more than doing their jobs, beheaded on video by terrorists, using them as pawns, valuable for propaganda and fundraising. Covering warfare is by far riskier than ever before when conflicts were between armies from rival nations and the battle lines were once solidly defined. Our next guest considered Foley and sought love his friends. Award-winning filmmaker Matthew Van Dyke is no stranger to danger himself, once serving as a freedom fighter in Libya against Gaddafi and later as a POW in a Libyan jail. He joins us now from New York. Welcome. It's nice to have you here today. Thank you. You know, the Committee to Protect Journalists is reporting that three foreign journalists and 50 Syrian reporters are believed to be hostages right now, which shows that no one is off limits these days. Uh, their journalists are targets in that region with many people telling stories of those who don't have a voice. That's why they're there. It takes courageous reporting to bring out the truth, yet it's simply getting too risky for so many out there. What impact could this have if more news organizations begin pulling journalists out? Well, they already have. Uh, there used to be a lot more journalists going to Syria than, than there are now. In 2012, when I was making my film in Syria, uh, there were probably a dozen journalists there at the same time. And now you'd be hard-pressed to find any, perhaps, in Aleppo who are foreign journalists. The risk is too great. Um, the insurance costs are very high. Freelancers won't go because of the risk-reward ratio isn't there. That's a serious problem. It's a serious problem, and the fewer journalists you have out there, the fewer stories that you have about the people who are being affected by the events out of their control. Right, and, and this is exactly what the Assad regime in Syria particularly wants. Um, there's nothing that Bashar Assad is happier about right now than the world's sort of forgotten about Syria and what he's doing to the people in Syria while we're focused on ISIS. You knew Foley and Sotlov. They felt compelled to be an eyewitness to history and going where others don't go normally to tell the stories of people. It was a sense of mission for them, wasn't it? Yes, they both had a passion for what they did. They believed strongly in it. They believed that the stories needed to be told, and they did it at great risk to themselves. James Foley was captured in Libya, and after being released by the Gaddafi regime, went right back to Libya to continue reporting on the conflict. And then he went on to Syria, and Stephen Sotloff had also reported in Libya um, and had been to Syria more than once before he, he disappeared. You also so showcase that sense of purpose and passion with your new documentary, Not Anymore, A Story of Revolution, which documents the impact of war on Syrians. What do you hope people who see it come away with? I made that film to encourage people to care about the Syrian conflict and to support the revolution. Um, you know, I, I want people to understand what's happening. A lot of the world is disconnected from events far away, but the values that we have and, and the values for liberty and democracy, I believe, are fairly universal, and I want people to identify with the Syrian struggle and support them. I want to show our audience a clip from your documentary, if we could play that now. So I have to go. I have to do this. I'm afraid of death. I joke that I always keep one bullet left in my yes. gun for myself. You must keep one bullet here in Syria. You keep it for yourself, it's better than you, the regime catch you. I mean, these are very compelling stories and quite sobering. You are telling people uh, about individuals who are half a world away, yet they are people like you and I, and they are just trying to live their lives in peace. Right, and this is why uh, I chose Malia and Noor for this film. They both speak English. They both have similar hopes and dreams to people in the West. Um, they're just like anybody you might know in your own neighborhood in America or Europe. Um, Noor is a, a journalist who's risking her life to tell the stories of her people, and Malia is a young rebel commander who, um, you know, very articulate, very bright, very funny and witty, uh, who's now had to go from civilian to warrior uh, for the freedom of his people. Well, it's a very moving documentary. I want to ask you really quickly before you go, do you have plans to return to the front lines yourself and cover the story that's taking place in Iraq and Syria right now with ISIS? I'll be returning to Iraq in the near future to deliver aid to Christian refugees who have been driven from their homes by ISIS. I've launched a razor, uh, fundraiser uh, online that's been successful so far, and I'll also likely be doing a fundraiser in New York as well 
for that for that cause. And where can they go for that information? Uh, the fundraiser is on Indiegogo. It runs through to late September. Uh, and the fundraiser in New York, I'll be posting details on my website, MatthewVanDyke.com. All right, Matthew, thank you very much. All the best to you. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it.